So what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to look at why using ground to verify voltage in a circuit is not necessarily a good thing. So I'm going to use this ream air handler. This is a 208 power source and I've got my terminal block back here and I'm just going to be looking at the electric heat uh, in this example. So right now I've got the high voltage power on to the unit but the thermostat is set in the off position so nothing is running. All right. The only time that I like to check ground um, or use ground as a reference point is only to verify voltage on each leg of power coming into a unit. So I could easily put both my leads at the terminal block and if you watch the uh, meter off in the left you'll see that this leg, this bottom leg of the terminal block has got 122 volts on it and I can check the top leg and it's got 121, you know 122 is about the same right but I'm checking everything in these, these first checks are to ground and uh, I'm gonna try, like I said, try to clarify why some young guys get this messed up. So I know that each leg, each line of power has power on it. I could have easily put my meter, uh, my test leads on that and gotten 208 and that would have given me my total uh, voltage for this unit. But just to go with the ground check, uh, I did that and each line has power on it. So like I said, my unit is off nothing is running only the the transformer is powered so if i were to follow a leg of power from the terminal block okay i've got 120 volts on that leg and i follow it as it goes into the sequencer and i've still got that 120 volts going in there okay so power is sitting at the sequencer waiting to work i know it's not working because the switch is open i've got the thermostat off there's nothing running but if I check on the outlet side of that switch, I get 122 volts. If I check going into the uh, element itself, I get 122 volts. If I check coming out of the element, 122 into the safety, which is in series with the element, I get 122. Coming through on the other side of the safety is 122 and then back and I wind up on the opposite side of the terminal block, I get 122 volts. So everywhere that I've checked, uh, excuse me, everywhere that I've checked in this circuit, I get 122 volts. I am seeing one leg of power everywhere. Does that mean that I have proper power on the circuit? No, you're only checking one leg of power, all right? So that's all the checks with the, with the heater off. I'm going to turn the heater on now and we're going to repeat the checks and I'm going to do it in the same order and you can watch right over here on the screen and we'll actually see what it, the voltage checks are with the heat running. Terminal block, I got power. Is power going into the sequencer switch? Yes, 121 volts. Is it coming out of the switch? Do I have power? Yes, I have 122 volts going into the heater, still there, out of the heater, still there, into the safety, and then out of the safety, back to the other side of power. All right. I don't know if you caught that, but all the readings were the same, whether the power whether I was actually running the heat or not everything was the same okay had to let the unit shut off just to get rid of the noise so by using one of my test leads on ground and this is for whatever reason seems to be a common thing with technicians uh, it's it's a terrible way to see where power is because voltage is actually back feeding through your safety switch in this case and the heater and one side of power when the when the sequencer is not working not calling for the heat strip one side of power sitting on the outlet side of the switch you know and then one side of power sitting on the other side so i've got power everywhere in the circuit what keeps the circuit from not working is the fact that the operating control that sequencer switch or that contactor switch or that fan relay switch is open if you use ground as one half of your checks on your leads, you're probably going to confuse yourself at first if you're if you're not if you don't know what you're looking for. So, 
if I were to check, uh, and I'm going to do this the hopscotch way, right? If I check power on each side of the terminal block with my leads, I can see that I've got 211 volts coming into this unit. All right. If I were to check the voltage, now my unit is off. If I were to check, I can leave one lead on uh, the terminal block, but I have to check this other one, right? So this red wire here is one side of the heating element. And if I check going into the heating element, I'll see zero, all right? I'm not applying power on this heater because that switch is open, all right? If I check the outlet of that switch, which should be on my L1 side, I'll say, and I check it to my L2 on the terminal block, I see zero. Is there power there? Absolutely. If I check from here to ground, I know there's a leg of power there, but for the total circuit voltage, for the complete picture, there's nothing there for that load. It's, it doesn't have the voltage that it needs to work. I would have to get this switch to pass power across, so it's got to close, in order for that heater to get the the full voltage that it needs okay so by checking i'm going to leave one lead here on the red by checking power going in if we were to hopscotch this that switch is open so i've got okay i'm looking for my 208 volts in this case from the terminal block it goes into the sequencer okay i've still got that full voltage power if the switch is closed it should pass out of the sequencer and it doesn't. So I know that power going in the switch versus power coming out, right? You can see it is 211 going in and zero coming out. I know that switch is open. So I'm gonna turn the heat back on and we're gonna recheck this. All right, I've turned the heat on and verified that the heat strip is actually on. So now let's, let's walk through with the hopscotch, not the ground, okay? Uh, and hopefully this makes a little sense. So what we're looking for when we hopscotch is the full voltage reading, all right? So I start out at the terminal block, I've got my power, and I go, I leave my one lead on L2. So by leaving the one lead still on the L2, I'll call it, I can follow the other side of power all the way from the terminal block, I've got power, into the switch, I've got power, out of the switch, I've got power, and then into the actual element and I've got my full power and it's pulling about 18 amps now the secret to the hopscotch is once you hit the load in that one leg of power you were following now you have to put your lead on the other side because now you're after the load you're on the other side of power so you have to reference the L1 now and now I can put on the outlet of the heater if we follow the circuit and I can see I've got 208, all right? Then I can go to the uh, to the high limit, 208, out of the high limit, 209, right? And all the way back, and basically, I start at the terminal block on both sides of power, and if I hopscotch all the way through, I end at the terminal block on both sides of power. 